So today for the herb of the week here, we're going to be talking about dandelion roots since it's spring. And this should be one of the most common herbs used because it's everywhere, right? Is it native to the USA? European. It's one of the thousands of invasives. How did all these invasives get here? All these weeds. Really important. Try here. Yeah. Let's take it here. All the Europeans and people from around the world brought their herbal gardens and their food gardens with them and brought the seeds over. That's how they all got here. In recent times, it's from the horticulture industry has introduced all kinds of invasives, weeds, and terrible plants to America. But all the original ones are from all the way back to, yeah, there's articles written on all the things, even the early settlers and the first people to America brought. And that's where it all escaped from, all of it. It's over right here. Isn't that cool? Herbal medicine. Right? So today we're going to talk about dandelion root, which is one of those herbs you should know a hundred uses for. He's 30. It's one of the most common herbs, and instead of spraying it in your yard, you should be eating it, right? You can dig the roots. You just have to know if your yard's been sprayed, or if you're in a nature area, like make sure it hasn't been sprayed or polluted, or like if it's in the city, make sure you're not harvesting from a park that used to be like a dump or you know, has lead, you know, that's the thing that we have to kind of be worried about. So this is, I mean, you can grow dandelion roots really easily, right? Um, remember the first time I went to see Matthew Wood when he, back when he had his big herb farm and uh, pull up down this little driveway and here comes this interesting looking person with like a wheelbarrow like dandelion roots. Oh. I was like his apprentice, one of them that were working to stay on the farm with him. And they dug these all day long. I mean, this was like a thousand roots, maybe. I mean, it was just like crazy how much dandelion you have to dig to do that. So it was like, you yeah, know, very impressive. So these are things that are all around us everywhere. And all plants of dandelion are medicinal. But we're mostly going to talk about the roots today. But since we're here, we should talk about the other ones. So we use the flowers. What do we use the flowers for? They're edible. They're a little bitter, right? They're not the most delicious things. Um, but we put the flowers into salads. We can eat them. We can tincture them. They're like a great source of vitamins, especially vitamin A. So they're used a lot historically for skin problems. Chinese medicine will still often use just the flowers sometimes too. So you can tincture the flowers, you can dry them, you can eat them. All those beta carotene compounds for our eyes and skin, they're very stable. They don't get affected by drying or heat. So, so most people just in the old days, they would just eat the flowers. So they're just a little bitter, that's all. The stems are a little bit different, right? When you break the stem, what happens to it? You get the milky latex, right? What does that always remind us of with nature? Pain remedy? What's that? Pain remedies? So, well, with California poppy it was, or with um, wild lettuce it was, but that usually when we break that stem or break a plant and we have this milky white latex that comes out. And it is that, but it usually means- Beware. Purgative, yes, beware. We're going to purge your bowels. So the stems have been used as a spring tonic for people to eat and they're stronger cleansing to the liver, but they also purge the gallbladder and the bowels. Well, the famous herbalist Maria Treben, she recommended people eat about 10 stems a day. That's a lot. I mean, you're probably going to get some major bowel cleansing out of that. So 
and we so when we tincture the plant, we usually don't tincture the stems. You're going to make medicine. Um, we could also, that latex, that white sap that comes out, that's the stuff that kills warts also. So we can put it on warts or moles to kind of burn them off. It's like a crude burning compound. Okay. That's about all I know about. I know there's also a lot of homesteaders who will make dandelion stem and leave fritters where you're just gonna roll them in flour and fry them, you know? Because you know, if you're in a survival situation or homesteading situations, a little more filling than just eating dandelion stems, right, to have some starch and some carbs on the outside of it probably tastes a lot better too because the stems are pretty bitter so and then the flowers we can also we make like flower kisses on people too right? mm -hmm. so kiss by a flower. that's good luck right we take the flower and rub yellow all over somebody you know like kiss by a dandelion yeah i was told it's you like butter What's that? Is that like a Minnesota yeah. thing? No. That what? It means you like butter. And so we have it always have it like all over. <laughs> so oh. I was like, I love butter. It's uh well you can actually you can take notes. So if you're saying up in Minnesota there where it's a little colder <laughs> and um, even less to do than in Nebraska. Um, uh, the dandelion kisses me a little butter. Yeah. Okay. Well, there are, there's probably some old thing to that because often dandelion flowers were often like cooked in butter and made like it's called dandelion butter. Because you would cook the because the vitamin A and the beta carotene is fat soluble. So you can make like a flour infused butter for extra nutrition. So there's probably like probably comes from that old tradition of like making flour butters out of it. I don't I never did that before. I imagine it's gonna make your butter a little bitter though. Uh, there's something else about the flowers. Oh, the flowers are really good too, like topical on skin conditions. They're really, really helpful. The dry, irritated, inflamed skin or rashes, you can poultice them or you can just rub them on stuff. Makes a nice oil. Makes a nice oil. Yeah, dandelion flower is also one of the 10 basic herbal oils that we use in herbal medicine. What do we use dandelion flower oil for? This is where you cook the flowers into the oil, like the olive oil, strain it. We use that for the liver. You're gonna massage it over and around your liver for liver and gallbladder condition. That your liver's on your right hand side by your ribs, but it's also used a lot for muscle aches and pains like fibromyalgia joint aches and pains and and people who are what we call livery or have liver problems and have joint problems because of that they're also used um that oil is also used topically on any kind of a chronic skin condition like rashes psoriasis eczema wrinkles all those kinds of things. That would be a flower oil. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Okay. Okay. So those are like the flower and the stems. The leaf is going to be more of a nutritional source, right? So the leaf of the dandelion is going to be one of our traditional pot herbs. And remind me again, what is the, the idea of a potter in the olden times? But it is pot and boil it down, throw it out, boil it down, throw it out, boil it down. So the idea of a potter is that, you know, most of these wild greens are so bitter, they're not very palatable. Or they can be really purgative, right? So you're going to take a, basically an armful into a big soup kettle of boiling water. And you're going to 
cook them really quickly, then you're going to throw the water off because most of the bitter stuff's going to get drawn out. And depending on how bitter it is, you might need to do that once and throw the water out or two or even three times with some stuff that's really bitter. And then you can eat them. I mean, the problem is a lot of the nutrition is gone, but you're still, it's going to be less cleansing. But um, so that would be like a potter. So dandelion, the dandelion greens we buy at like Whole Foods and a farmer's market taste very different than wild dandelion greens, right? So the variety that you buy at, sometimes you'll see at farmer's market have been bred over many times and many generations in France. And it's a, they've created like a variety that's less bitter and the leaves grow really large. They're about like this big. They look like perfect. They look really beautiful. A little bit of a different shape, but they're really not like super, super bitter. Where if you go to your yard or to the woods and pig dandelion like that, that's pretty bitter. You got to have like a nice balsamic, like a really tart, tangy, something to really cover the taste. Sweet doesn't cover the taste. You need like a salty vinaigrette, right? Something like that. So what do we use the leaves for medicinally? So we're going to, we could eat them or we could tincture them or we could make a tea out of them, right? The leaves. The leaves are going to be one of our main diuretics. And in herbal medicine, we call this particular type of herb, the dandelion leaf. This is the leaf only, not the root here. We're just talking about the leaf is an aqua retic. Aqua retic is a diuretic type plant that does not make your body excrete potassium and electrolyte. So it's different than a prescription diuretic. So instead of losing electrolytes, you're actually gaining electrolytes because the leaf have a lot of electrolytes and minerals and vitamins in them. So Dandelion leaves are a nutritional tonic, and they're one of our main diuretics for cleansing the kidney and bladder. They don't treat bladder infections, but they're good for flushing the kidney and bladder for cleansing. And they do help the kidneys get rid of like gout and uric acid type crystals from the kidneys, help them flush. Um, so we're going to use it when we need to help people get water off their body, right? Like when people have swollen legs and ankles, or they're retaining too much water, or when people have liver disease, you know, their whole abdomen's going to swell up with like fluids. So this can kind of help draw some of the fluids off. It's also very safe. Um, in the older days, before we had multivitamin minerals, this would have been dandelion leaf was one of the key ingredients in like what they call the herbal multivitamin mineral, right? So nettle leaf would have been in there, dandelion leaf, you know, chickweed, seaweed, like these, before we had the ability to make processed vitamins, you would eat this like whole food extract. Alfalfa. Alfalfa was in there for sure. So. You eat it, you could, could you do it as tea? Uh, they were usually just sold as like powders. So you would just kind of take a shot of them, you put them in like a shake or something or something. Yeah, but they were also sold as capsules sometimes too. Can't really buy them much anymore. I don't think anybody's making that. It's like, it'd be a cool, like, you know, instead of mud water and always saying you just launch a like truly antique version, which should really be cool. You could put a bunch of cool stuff in it. Um, that would be really fun to do. Okay. That was also before like barley grass and chlorella. And, Spirit, none of that was available back, you know, in the early 1900s, even into the 1970s. This is really common. Okay. 
Back in the old days, I have a bunch of antique books. They used to publish, there used to be books just on the nutritional content of plants, because that's how a lot of people got their vitamins and minerals if they were deficient, because you couldn't go to the store and buy a B vitamin, B1, or B2. They just didn't have that. So, fairly recently. Okay. The, so the leaf is a coveted secret amongst bodybuilders and fitness contestants and swimsuit models. Why? Because it's a special kind of diuretic. It's the only known diuretic that pulls the fluids off between the skin and your muscles. So like if you're doing a bodybuilding contest, you would really vasodilate it or like with bodybuilders. Because I don't know if you know this, pretty much all bodybuilders and fitness people abuse drugs like crazy. Steroids and diuretics, it's just like a huge, scary thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I know two swimsuit contestants that I see as clients that both ended up in the hospital for um, kidney disease from taking too many diuretics and getting dehydrated for a show. So, um, so when you take diuretics drugs, which a lot of these contestants do, it just generally pulls everything out and your kidneys get really stressed, but it still won't necessarily pull fat fluid out. So dandelion is like a kind of like a trade secret a little bit. Do that kind of stuff. And yes, these people have to check in every week of the coach, like basically scan their bodies and tell them just all kinds of like or whole body image things really kind of bad you know you're looking fat here you're looking at Tuesday you know it's like oh my gosh nothing like getting criticized with your swimsuit every day and paying somebody like three hundred dollars an hour for it you know it's crazy to me um so dandelion leaf is also just a great liver cleansing herb Like some companies, when you buy dandelion root supplements, sometimes they'll have a leaf in there, sometimes they won't. So if you're going to tincture it at home, it's, it's, it's okay to have a little bit of a leaf in there, but I like to keep them separate most of the time. Uh, you can also buy a dandelion digger, but I mean, most of us are just going to get a little, have you seen the dandelion diggers? It's just like a little weird little thing you can buy like it is hard where you step on it and it clamps it down and it pop it up. It doesn't work that great, but that's kind of cool. So you're just going to dig those roots, right? So the root is the part we're going to talk about now. This is the main part. A really powerful medicinal for as common as it is, right? It's everywhere. Kind of like metal. I remember one time I had to buy dandelion root as a young student and I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm like a total failure as an herbalist. Like I didn't have any made at home and it was, I think, out of season or I didn't have time to go dig it. I was just like, wow, oh, it's like a failure. I'm going to fail. <laughs> um, the dandelion root is one of the cheapest, yeah, most abundant medicines that everybody should know. So the main target for dandelion root is what organ system? Yeah. yeah. Liver. So pretty much inner gallbladder too, right? So pretty much most of all of its use is going to center around the liver. And we've talked a lot about this triangle. What's the triangle of digestion? Triangle, we have liver, gallbladder, your stomach, and pancreas, and then your small intestine and large intestines forms like the basin. 
but these two are the most important, right? Your liver and your gallbladder, stomach and pancreas are the most important. Why? Because of all the secretions and like everything, digestion starts up high, right? So it's called the downstream effect. The upstream, the stomach, pancreas, liver, gallbladder are off. It's going to be off down here in your intestines. It's the downstream effect, right? Just like when Sioux City dumps all their pollution in, it's, just, it's coming to Omaha down the river, right? It's just upstream, downstream effect. So if your liver and gallbladder are not ideal, or your stomach or pancreas are not ideal, you're always going to have intestinal problems. This often gets overlooked in like treating colon diseases and colon cancer and you know Crohn's disease and colitis and ulcerative colitis. People, Western medicine doesn't approach digestion this way, right? This is more of a holistic idea. So dandelion is going to target the stomach, the pancreas, and the liver and the gallbladder. So it gets all four of the key components targeted. So what in the world, what liver and what digestive problems are we going to use dandelion for? Thank you. If you guess. What's that? Like helping your liver detox? So dandelion is one of our best things for detoxification, for sure. Mm -hmm. Here, really, we're going to say dandelion can basically help help about any liver problem that we know of, right? So it's good for jaundice, where your liver is inflamed. And what else is happening with jaundice? Your so fingers are, what's that? Bilirubin's so bilirubin's increasing, yep. And that's going to make our body look like what? Yellow. We're gonna be yellow, our fingernails are gonna be yellow first, and our eyes, the whites of our eyes, and then eventually our tongue will have a yellow coating pretty quick. And then eventually it starts to get where your hands and then all your skin and your face. Remember the when I was in the hospital in San Antonio, the first like true, like I've, I've seen jaundice people, I've never seen somebody that was like hospital jaundice. I remember I walked in the room and I just went like, ah, like I like yelled because I like, it like caught me. I felt so bad. This lady was like, uh, she was an immigrant, I think from Russia or Ukraine or something. She couldn't speak English. I mean, she was like yellow as a crayon. I was like, well, just like caught me off guard. Like, oh my God, I've never seen someone that yellow. So that would be jaundice. It usually comes because the liver is diseased or has some kind of inflammation. So if your liver is inflamed, right? If your liver is sluggish, right? Remember in, in natural medicine, your liver doesn't have to be diseased if your liver is just not functioning well. It's clogged, it's sluggish. Um, if you get a gallbladder scan, even a medical terminology that I love, they still use is they'll say you have gallbladder sludge, which is like basically saying gallbladder and liver are congested, blocked, right? Like a very naturalistic way to say that. Um, so this is going to be for any kind of liver digestive problem. MTHFR? What's that? Does it help with MTHFR? It also helps with MTHFR, like liver kind of type of methylation genetic issues. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay. Um, fatty liver. So it's going to help for a fatty liver, which is a growing problem in America. It's going to be helpful for all kinds of digestive problems like acid reflux acid indigestion, mm -hmm. people who feel full or bloated after eating, people who feel full and bloated, especially after eating what kind of food? Greasy, Greasy fatty, or fried, right? People who get stomach aches from grease and fats and 
fish oil capsules, right? Nausea, queasiness from more from liver problems, not so much like car sickness and that. This would be more liver problems. People get a lot of nausea and queasiness. Uh, dizziness happens a lot with liver diseases. People often get dizzy. Okay. Um, obviously, people who react to alcohol really negatively. It's also really good for constipation, but why? Why is it good for constipation? How's that work? Because remember, bowel motility is stimulated by bile. Bile is made by the liver, stored in the gallbladder, and then it's released into your digestive tract. And that's where all of our rhythm and motility comes from. So constipation, people will often have, the root of it is often liver gallbladder problems. That's why we always start treating constipation with like fiber and getting fluids and water first. Then if that doesn't do it, we think about giving people something for their liver and digestion, like bitters or dandelion root. And then if that doesn't work, then we can think about like laxatives and stuff, but that's like kind of like a last resort, okay? So anytime our liver enzymes are elevated, right? Which will show up on a lab as ALT, AST, and our ALK loss. So anytime these three labs are elevated and there's liver stress, scandalion is a great option. Um, dandelion is also going to be good for low acid secretion, both acid reflux and hyperacidic stomachs, but also low acid secretion too. It's going to be good for food allergies because it's going to help all four of these aspects of digestion and assimilation. Okay. Can we give dandelion root to young children? We do a lot. It's one of the best herbs for like constipation. Children, children often have a lot of liver gallbladder type digestive issues, especially if the child was born jaundice, that almost assures that they're having pediatric liver digestive issues. But it's one of the great constipation remedies for kids. Okay. How are you giving that to that? Usually we're gonna, because the root is a little bitter, then we're not gonna drink a tea, right? Um, so for this, we're gonna probably make a glycerite, like an alcohol-free tincture. It's pretty tasty that way. Okay. We're going to also use this for any kind of gallbladder problem. You have gallbladder sludge. You go to the doctor because you're having gallbladder, right? You're having cramps and pains in your right-hand side, especially like after eating or after fatty food or after drinking alcohol. You're having like gallbladder attacks. We're going to use this for that. So if you have this gallbladder sludge, if you get your... Um, like they call it a HIDA scan on your gallbladder and they tell you how much it's functioning and you've lost function. We use dandelion root to kind of help support gallbladder function. You can use it for acute gallbladder attacks and chronic. Yeah. Somebody doesn't have a gallbladder. Yeah. So this is also, remember we talked about the phenomenon of having your gallbladder removed. Right. So if you have your gallbladder removed, then you have no you have no bile on storage, right? Your liver has to be able to secrete it right away. So if they cut your gallbladder out, then you now are forever having issues with bile. And and if they just remove your gallbladder, the problem's not fixed. So eventually the liver 
um, bile ducts get more and more congested or inflamed after a gallbladder removal. So the liver problems just tend to get worse. So, you know, at least half of people are the same or worse after a gallbladder removal. And a lot of clients that come to see me are just quite frankly really upset that they have their gallbladder out. I mean, sometimes you have to have your gallbladder out because the gallstone is stuck and it's like a medical emergency, but that's pretty rare. And your pain level is going to be very high. You will be in the ER for that because it will hurt very, very bad. So, um, does it help with gallstones? Yeah, it helps with gallstones. People who are prone to gallstones or people that have had already past gallstones also. So, after someone's had their gallbladder removed, we're going to give them probably smaller amounts of dandelion root to start with, right? We just want to kind of ease back into it to help them compensate for not having any gallbladder, especially if they're going to eat something really fatty or also protein, you know, requires a lot of liver to help digestion. Okay. So with the um, gallstones, does it actually help break down the stone or does it help pass the stone? It can help to pass them. It can help to break them down, but it just takes a long period of time. And because your liver is so connected to your skin, that's a major connection we've talked about. Dandelion root, because it's liver cleansing agent, is going to be used for all kinds of skin problems, right? Like acne, especially eczema, psoriasis, rashes, right? Hives, just all kinds of skin problems we're going to treat with. Um, dandelion root. That's one of the great also pediatric skin remedy. Uh, remember, children should not have skin problems. This is not normal. This is not natural. Children should not have acid reflux. This is not natural. This is not normal, right? It's telling us something's going on with diet or digestion. Okay. Really good for people that have this, <laughs> this pain in this area that can't be figured out. You just have a pain in your right hand side, or you have a pain between your shoulder blade, or you have pain, liver pains are right here, gallbladder pain right on the side of your head. Okay. So all kinds of skin problems, especially acne and boils, and cyst, cystic acne, or any kind of hormonal acne too. Because our liver also affects our, our hormones, we often use dandelion as a supportive role for people who have hormone imbalances of estrogen or progesterone or testosterone, or for people who can't absorb estrogen, testosterone, progesterone. We can have like a little bit of a balancing effect on hormone levels that are too high or too low. That's an old trick, like when people don't respond to like testosterone or estrogen or progesterone and they go back to get their labs tested and nothing has changed, even though they're taking a lot of the hormone, like we would give something for the liver, like dandelion. Okay. Uh, also traditionally used for mouth ulcers. Like canker sores? Mm -hmm. Remember canker sores are from digestion. Great holistic principle. They never, despite what dentists say, they just don't appear randomly for no reason. Canker sores are always either a drug side effect or come from something with digestion. Okay. Dandelion root oddly has also a little bit of an affinity to the spleen. So when people have a swollen spleen, which is really common with people that have like a 
chronic virus of some kind or a chronic infection like Lyme's disease or Epstein-Barr virus, herpes virus, or any of the other chronic infections. Okay. One of the other weird immune uses that I think Chinese medicine best utilizes dandelion is used very specifically in Chinese medicine. Remember how we talked about when people get an infection and it comes in through the surface layers of the body and then hopefully the body will fight it off and expel it like in the form of a sweat response. But often, you know, we can overcome an infection, but we still feel like crap or years sometimes, right? That's what we call that Xiaoyang, remember, where stuff is stuck halfway. Like you're, you're over the infection, your labs are fine, but you're not recovered. Chronic viruses like that will always affect the liver. So in Chinese medicine, we always actually do stand alive for that particular use. We put them in immune formulas for people that have like chronic infections that are really bad. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned um, something about excess protein. If someone's doing carnivore, is that a yes. good idea? So if someone's doing a keto diet, like high protein, high fat, or carnivore diet, like high, high animal protein, we would do bitters or dandelion to help them compensate and kind of like deal with things. Also, the <laughs> diet said that would make people really constipated too. So, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I know. All right, if you're on the liver king diet, right? Let's see. <laughs> liver king guy. Do you know liver king has ab implants? Honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hollywood people is what, what is Robert? Oh, is this he's social funny. media famous guy? I think he's like a health guy, but he's just like <laughs> the most like eating just like raw to liver and yeah. so like a liver high diet, but he's it's kind of like all of a show crazy workouts, mm -hmm. but he gets like, like six pack or an eight pack. But yeah, it's recently come out that that's they're like glass that are in plants. You spray that one. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it probably has a spray <laughs> data too. And all kind of um, We also have roasted dandelion roots, which a lot of companies sell where we can make our cells by roasting the roots, right? So first you have to dry them and then you're gonna pan fry them over heat for about a half hour. And they become more chocolatey or roasted. Some of the medicinal traits are lost when they roast them, but it starts to taste really good. It gets more of a coffee-like flavor. So a lot of people, so often roasted dandelion root is one of the key ingredients in all the coffee substitute. But you can make it yourself too, just from the dandelions from your yard, right? Really easy to do. Um, there's a lot of other uses for dandelion, but that's kind of like the main gist of it, right? Um, also used for a lot of chronic eye conditions, just in general, because remember, your eyes are connected to your liver health. So it just in general, people have a lot of eye problems, eye diseases, eye conditions will often use dandelion root as just a supportive therapy. Okay. Like bad eyesight? Like poor eyesight. Or night vision, or eyesight, just irritated eyes, allergy eyes. Mm -hmm. So, like when you have itchy eyes from cat allergies, mm -hmm. dandelion. dandelion root, because it supports liver function, another use, secondary use would be for chronic allergy. Yeah, because remember when people do. When we do the spring liver cleanses, usually people develop less and less allergies over time. I've had no allergies in spring. 
That's good. I haven't been in MPP. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else has a lot of like, oh, good. Must be like 52, so they think everything. Uh, did we say it's also good for gout and uric acid too? Yeah. 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 I okay. Uh, the only other way we use this is because remember the liver is filtering the blood. We often use dandelion root with a lot of like mysterious blood diseases where like people have really high iron or low iron or they have low red blood cell counts or really high and like doctors just don't aren't really sure why it's happening. So we can remember the liver helps make the blood and store blood. So it, it has a lot of functions with hematology and blood production. So we'll often use dandelion in situations like that too. So dandelion would be good with ashwagandha because that also helps with red blood cells, white blood cells, stuff mm -hmm. like that. And their mechanism would be totally different, right? Because the dandelion would go through the liver or ashwagandha like directly stimulates like Blood cell production and that. Does Shavandra berry do that? It's really, Shavandra nice. berry does that a little bit too. Mm -hmm. it does do that a little bit. Okay, so dandelion does. Yeah. Anybody have any other questions? There's a lot of other uses, but to me, that's like the main main grasp of it. If you were to take it for your eyes, how do you recommend that? Yeah, sure? okay. So for dandelion root, pretty much any way we take it works. It doesn't matter if it's a tincture, if the tincture is the dried root or the tincture is the fresh root. Capsules work great. Tea works great. Uh, it just works great in any mode or method that you take it. So it would be the usual doses, right? Which would be how many capsules a day? One or two capsules, three times a day. We're going to take our dandelion root when in relationship to eating. Before. 15 minutes before eating. So we can get that all those digestive secretions going. Right. Uh, a tincture, you don't need much, like 30 to 60 drops three times a day for the meal. And the tea is just like usually a cup one or two times a day. You can make a tea from the fresh dandelion root, so just, just a little stouter. Okay. Any questions on dandelion root? Is it also lymphatic? It's a little bit of a lymphatic, but to me, it more like targets the spleen with the yellow flower property, and that it just kind of does kind of drain the lymph a little bit through the spleen. Yeah, it's not like a true alternative, but sometimes it's labeled that. But to me, it's not quite like a true alternative. So it's one of our common what we call weed medicines too, which is the idea that all the things that are weeds are actually, they're there by design, right? We have dandelion roots growing everywhere in America because our world is so polluted and that's just nature's way of saying, pay attention, make me. So remember we have to rethink the idea of oh, it's there by design, right? Not by accident. So especially if you have dandelions that have shown up in your yard, especially, you know, especially when you yourself, right? Somebody in your band that eats it. Okay. Any other questions on dandelion? And you said hormonal acne, but it helps with like PCOS acne. Or it's helpful acne? for PCOS and cystic acne for sure, because it, it does help the liver. Um, deal with the uh, excessive like antigens and testosterone. So it's very good for PCOS. The only challenge of dandelion is that we want enough to get the digestive effects, but if we get like really high doses, it might like kind of purge us a little bit, even though it's not a laxative, but it's, you know, if you just go out in your yard and eat a bunch of dandelion roots, you're probably going to have some looser stools the next day and things like that. 
Okay. Is it in um, Prairie Stars Digestive Bitters? Do you know? Well, this is one of the main ingredients of the liver formula and the digestive bitters. Digestive bitters. And then is it cooling? Oh, uh, yeah. Dandelion root is cooling. Yep. And uh, all bitters are a little bit too. drying. So it's, yeah, it's nature would be cool, slightly drying, but not, not excessively. Okay. And then the roasted root would be way more mild. What was the other question? Any uh, contraindications? The only contraindications for dandelion root is if we're going to try to help somebody with gallbladder cramps or pains or gallstones. Uh, we just want to make sure they don't have like an obstruction, which again, so that'd be a really severe ER pain. And when you go to the ER, they'll do your scan and they'll say, oh, yes, you know, if you have that obstruction, you're going right into surgery. There's no question. If you just have gallstones, you're not going to, we're not going to care that much. So, is it a downward direction? Downward direction. Classic downward. Good job. You guys all forgot, I forgot to say that. Yeah, downward moving. So, directionality. And also, uh, any spiritual uses that you would use the Yeah, so emotionally, dandelion root is used specifically for really angry, grumpy, grouchy kids or adults or elderly people of all ages, especially in people who are constipated and grumpy and grouchy. So it does emotionally help us to release and process anger. So it is common for people when they're taking the end of line to root to have some release or processing of anger. So we do have to be aware of that. If you're just doing a little bit for your digestion, you probably won't get that. But if you're doing a fair amount, you could get that. So it's not a laxative, it's not a habit forming laxative. But it can move the bowels, especially the more of it you get. So, okay. Um, that's it. Okay. Let's close the chapter on dandelion root.